Hey everyone, I'm Scott. I'm a Mog Antipod Disease patient and in this video series I'll be talking about my diagnosis and recovery from the condition. In this video I'm going to be talking about why I had to recently take a break from my myelitis, some recent medical updates and what the plans are for my myelitis going forwards. So firstly let's talk about where I've been. So I think it's been around six months since I last posted a video and there's a very good reason for this. Thankfully it is not health related but I will say thank you to the few people who reached out and asked how I was. So the reason why I've had to take a break from my myelitis is that I'm actually training to be a chartered accountant. The main requirement of becoming a chartered accountant is that I have to pass 13 accounting exams and currently I've passed 12 of the 13 exams so I only have one remaining. Some of you might remember that in my Mog Antibody Disease attack, I was actually studying for two accounting exams in that same week. I do believe that the stress of the exams contributed to that whole situation, so I thought it'd be best just to take a break from my myelitis, focus on all the exams, wait till that was all out of the way, and then return to my myelitis when I know that there's nothing else left. So I sat the final exam in September, and I'm currently waiting for the results which should come out in around mid-October time and I'm hoping that I will have to reset the exam and that once the results come out that's done and I don't need to focus on it anymore and that'll give much more time to focus on my myelitis. What I have next to talk about is some medical updates and there's been a few since my last video but just to recap from the last video I had talked about the change from going from 50 milligrams of azathioprine to 75 milligrams and as a result of that I ended up getting quite a serious infection. The infection that caused me to end up going into hospital thankfully cleared up with antibiotics. As a result I went back to the original dose of 50 milligrams of azathioprine twice a day. But after this point I actually had another neurology appointment which took place in June 2023. In this appointment I actually found out the results of the Mog antibody test which was taken back in January 2023. The result of this test was a negative which is pretty important because this is the first negative test that I've had since being diagnosed with Mog antibody disease. The first negative test in about three years. Now the research about Mog antibody disease titers and whether it's relevant or unrelevant is still up in the air as far as I'm aware. My neurologist gave me the choice to either continue with the treatment that I was currently on, so 50 milligrams of azathioprine twice a day, or I could take a chance and come off treatment altogether and just basically see what happens. It could be that I have another attack and go back onto the treatment or maybe nothing happens and the Mog antibodies stay away. So I actually made the decision to come off of all treatment. I thought that if there is a potential here that I won't need that treatment anymore and continuing to take it, probably not helping my body. I don't know if there's going to be any side effects down the line from taking the medication for that amount of time. Currently I'm not having any side effects. Azathioprine has been pretty good on the basis that I've kept it at 50 milligrams or lower. Whilst that's still great, I don't know what the long-term impact of being on that treatment. I decided to take the chance to come off of the treatment and just see what happens. If there is another attack, I'm hopeful that I'd be able to spot the symptoms way ahead of it becoming really serious so I can go get the treatment and get it sorted out quickly. I could discuss going on to another preventative treatment again if that is the case. So that's currently where I'm at. I've been off of azathioprine since the 21st of June 2023. That's been a good few months now and I haven't noticed any changes which is kind of expected. I didn't have any side effects with the medication at that dose. plan is to have another appointment around six months from the last one so it'll be towards the end of the year. But if everything's fine I will be discharged from the service but my neurologist has said that I can contact them at any point if something changes. Next, I'm gonna talk about the plans for my myelitis. The main plan I have going forward is to continue making content around mug antibody disease, even if I stay negative and I never have any problems with the condition again. When I first got diagnosed with the condition, there wasn't any patients making videos about mug antibody disease. So going forward, I still plan on making videos about the condition as I still read about it involving like research papers, still involved with the support groups and I don't think it's ever going to be a topic where I just completely drop it from my life even if I continue to test negative, I don't have any other issues with Mog antibody disease again. It's still important in my eyes that I'm aware of the information about the condition. Maybe some research comes out about what could influence attack or what could increase the likelihood of an attack. For me, this is going to be just an ongoing area of my life where I just stay up to date with the condition. If I'm spending the time staying up to date with the condition, I might as well keep making the videos so 
that information can be spread to you guys. The biggest caveat to like the My My Lights plans is the accounting exam. I'm hoping that I've passed the exam this time so I can dedicate it more time to My My Lights. But if I need to resit the exam, I might need to take another break to focus back on studying. These exams are difficult, as in really difficult. The pass rates for these exams are like between 30 and 40%. And I don't want to bore you with you like the details, but the size of my study books are like that. Um, all about tax, so I won't go into any details. You don't need to know about accounting and especially tax, but they're not easy exams. They do require a lot of studying. For the moment, I want to keep going with YouTube and just basically see where that takes me. So the last update that I have is I've been invited to speak at the SRNA's European Online Support Group meeting on the 22nd of October. So the SRNA hosts support groups for a variety of neuroimmune and neurological conditions, one of which is Morganta disease. The upcoming European meeting, I've been invited to talk about my story, about my myelitis and how my life's changed with the condition. Even though the meeting is a, a European meeting, anybody can join if you're based in the US or anywhere else. You can still come and join. I'll leave a link to it down in the video description below if you want to join. So the meeting is taking place at 3 p.m. British time on the 22nd of October. So if you're in the US, I believe East Coast, that will be around 10 a.m. in the morning. But depending on where you are, you might just want to double check that conversion. It's 3 p.m. on the 22nd of October, which is a Sunday. And also at the meeting, there'll also be some other discussions all about Morganta disease. If you want to attend and meet some of the people who have the condition, and ask questions or even if you just want to listen in then i'm sure they'll be happy to have you and that's all i have for you guys thank you guys for watching and if you want to watch another video about more disease then check out this video here